response. And, and, and that's borne out with, with clinical data that's now becoming available. So I, I think it's certainly dependent on patient preference. Some, some patients don't want to undergo procedures and they're more comfortable with systemic therapies. But I, I think that's my general approach. Okay, so to expound on that, when you're looking at someone with just only liver mets, I think liver-directed therapy is reasonable, but you're absolutely right. There is a chance that it can spread outside the liver, and obviously you're not going to be treating that. With uveal melanoma, sometimes it only the disease will stay in the liver for a couple of years. And I think a lot of the time, one of the things that can predict that is the volume of disease. So typically, if I see someone with a high volume of disease in the liver, that makes me wonder if we should be doing a liver-directed therapy but also systemic therapy at the same time or planning to sequence them very quickly. I think in general, people with very limited disease in the liver typically are more likely to benefit from the liver-directed therapy long-term just because they're probably less likely to have it spread outside the liver. When we're differentiating, Jason did a really good job talking about the percutaneous stuff where we stick a needle in and inject or treat one or two lesions versus the embolizations and the more hepzata, which treats the entire liver. Jason, would you want to comment on how you would look at on a scan to say, I can do this with a percutaneous ablation versus I need to treat the entire liver with hepzata or an embolization or something like that? That's a great question. The biggest thing is size and tumor number. If, if you have somebody that has one, two uh, metastases in the liver that are smaller than three centimeters is kind of our cutoff, then 